flying to the IGNA convention, I usually take my whole family, all 28 of them. I have six children. I lose count sometimes. But anyway, so we're, we're flying together. My kids are little, so you know they're short, so they can't really see over the seat in the plane. So they're little, they're all, they're, they're sitting there. And um, my wife and I, we're taller, so we can see the TV screen when it drops, right? So there's a movie playing. We don't want to see it, but it's in your face right here. And of course, alhamdulillah, we don't have headphones, so it's a silent film at that point. And it was the Justin Bieber documentary. <laughs> yeah, imagine that. Well, thankfully, it was a silent film, right? So <laughs> this documentary that is playing, I'm trying to avoid looking at it, but I can't help myself. I can't help myself because they're showing this kid come and start singing his songs, and girls in the audience are crying. Like, you could tell they're just like, we love you so much, I'll die for you. And mothers bringing their daughters to concerts. And then somebody's handed a voucher that says, you get to meet him backstage. You should see the family, how they're jumping up and down in joy. And in the course of that video, I was like, oh man, these, these people have nothing to look up to. This is all they have to look up to. They're so happy at this. They're so happy at this. How sad a life can it be? And next clip, there's a Muslim girl. She's, she's wearing a hijab. She's handed a voucher. You're going to get to meet Justin Bieber. And she's going around a tree, hugging it and going crazy. And she's not the only Muslim girl that would do that. She's not. Don't say, Astaghfirullah, what kind of Muslim? <laughs> That's the average Muslim girl. <laughs> That's normal. Okay? So now, we have a crisis, not just of faith, but some of the fruits of faith. What are some of the fruits of faith? The faith itself is you're convinced Islam is true, right? But beyond that, a step above that is, you take pride in it. And a consequence of that is, everything that is not Islam, no longer appeals to you. Everything that contradicts Islam, not only are you not attracted to it, you feel sad for people who are. You look at it as something beneath you. Let me tell you what something, a great thing for Muslims would be. A point of pride for Muslims would be. Instead of a young Muslim man thinking, I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't do the other, everything is haram. Look at my friends, they get to do this and that and the other. Instead of a Muslim girl who's going to high school and she's wearing hijab and everybody makes comments at her and pokes fun at her and says weird things to her. Or girls tell her, you look so ugly because of that thing on your head, etc, etc. And she's thinking in her head, you know, I wish I could be like those other girls. They get to do whatever they want. I can't do anything. I can't have any fun in life. The only thing that's keeping me from being happy is Islam. Our youth are not confident, not proud, not in love with Islam. They're not confident in the Qur'an. They're not confident that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the absolute best role model. No one deserves to be loved more. No one deserves to be followed more. No one. How do you address the crisis of faith? It's easy to talk about a problem. It's hard to talk about solutions. We have to create a culture around strong friendship. Identity itself, it revolves around who you hang out with who you spend most of your time with, who you identify with. When you spend most of your time on a computer, you know, you, you start taking on some of the qualities of the stuff you're reading and the stuff you're watching. It starts invading your thoughts. The kinds of people you spend time with, if they're studying Islam all the time, you'll want to study Islam too. If they're playing basketball all the time, you'll develop a habit for playing basketball also. If they're going to watch movies all the time, you're going to want to go to the movies too. Your environment has an effect on you. The people you surround yourself with has an effect on you. Starting with the Muslim family and then evolving to the Muslim community needs to actually have a campaign to ensure our young children are in the company of good role model older kids. Like a big brother, big sister type thing. Like so when, it, so when our girls are 12, 13, 14, when they're coming up in their ages, some of the more leading Muslim girls in our community that are 17, 18, 19, they're going to college, they're holding on to their religion, they're learning their deen. These girls are role models, they don't even know it. And our younger girls need to be spending time with these older girls. It's really important. That they have someone to look up to that is strong in their deen. And they aspire to want to be like them. That's really important. The same goes for the guys. At a younger age, what we do is we keep the little kids by themselves, we keep the big kids by themselves, and it doesn't work out. 
there needs to be a kind of mentorship happening at the community level. So that our younger boys are spending time with some of the older boys, especially the ones that are mature in their religion. And we have, mashallah, even though we don't have a lot of those, we have enough of those. We have enough young people that are mature in their religion, they really want to learn more about it. And they're good role models, you know, they're, they're, they have youth, they have energy, they have health, they have good looks, they could go on any number of ways in their life and they chose to submit themselves to Islam. That in and of itself is, is huge. That already makes them a role model. Whether they're ever grabbing a mic and speaking publicly, it doesn't matter, they're still role models. And we need to put them in that position. It does two things. One, it gives young people someone to look up to. And two, it gives older kids a sense of responsibility. It makes them realize that others have eyes on them. That they have to answer to a higher standard. Because they set the tone for others. It gives them a sense of responsibility too. And that kind of mentorship thing needs to start happening when families start doing that and utilizing the community as a place where that kind of mentorship can happen.